I'm joined by Geoff Whitten here from the Children's Centre. That's right. And I thought a general chat really with you, Jeff, about where we're up to because it's some time ago since we probably dealt with this. I mean, it's mm. had its moments, should we say? It's had its yeah. different directions. Yeah, might exactly. Be polite. I mean, it's a, we, we are an old charity. We're one of the oldest charities on the island. Um, celebrated the 150 years a, cu- a couple of years back. Um, and of course, during 150 years, things change and there's many different types of work that go on with children and young people. But in very recent years, we've had a very complicated history. Um, we used to do a lot more than we do currently now, um, working with all sorts of different ages of children, including nursery care, and there's all sorts of the things around that, um, and preschool. But through whatever reasons, um, and there were some, you know, some serious reasons, the charity had to ch- change in size and scale um, and become purely a charity. So we were right. previously, yeah. Well, let me do that because I mean, mm. you, 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 all you're hearing about, you pulled out of that. That's you know, it, it shrunk back to its core. Maybe I don't that's, know if you that's, that. But. That's the that's the right way, right way of phrasing it. Yeah, and became its core again. Its core, its core um, principal purpose as a charity, and that's working with children, young people, and families who have vulnerability around their lives. So that can be learning difficulties, it can be tr- struggles with schools, it can be health difficulties, it can be um, family difficulties and you know it, it's not easy being a parent in this day and age, it's not easy bringing up a teenager with all the kind of stresses and pulls and threats around them. So we do a variety of you know amazing, exciting and sort of um, innovative ways of working with, with children and young people to give them strength and resilience and confidence. So it can be as simple as giving a young lad a hammer to learn how to hit nails into a piece of wood mm-hmm. through to you know a group of girls wanting to learn how to mountain bike as fast as they can down a hill in a safe way mind but still you know mountain bike and get outside and do something you know active um so it's really it's it's, it's great work and it's sadly very necessary but um it's that's the work that we've carried on doing do the public have in- interaction with you or is it through agencies then well anyone um we have what's called a single point of referral so of course, agencies, you know, government agencies, schools, um, you know, the police, mental health services will contact us if they know of someone who could, who could, who, who we could work with. Um, but parents, parents can make a referral. Um, in, in fact, young people themselves can make a referral. It doesn't matter how we hear about the person. Um, but once we're connected to them, you know, we will work through a, a process, a co- obviously a rigorous process to make sure that they're, they're, they're appropriate and we can help them and we can support them. And how, then, how's your funding now then? Because wasn't this at heart of the matter almost, that the funding was cut drastically I, and it, therefore it, you cut services? Yeah, exactly. Um, it, was, it was to do with government contracts. Um, some government contracts delivering larger scale pieces of work were not renewed. Um, and the charity at that point was reliant on, upon them, you know, financially to, 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 to self-support. So now we are completely an independent charity. And and, you know, we, we, we ask for money to support the work that we do, but, but you know, we're, we're, we're in a position where we're able to kind of self-sustain, really. Um, and that doesn't mean that we've got, we do need money to come in. We're always asking for money to come in, but we're not in the same financial risk that we were a few years ago. Right. So you're expanding services? Or Absolutely. I mean, that's the ambition. Absolutely. You know, we're, we're, the group of people I joined, because I've only really been, I've been with the charity since April um, mm-hmm. 2019. Um, the group of people I, I joined were brilliant and committed and you know enthusiastic and, and so forth and so our, our, our drive and our ambition is, is to grow again because it had a bad rap didn't it it was getting that negative publicity yeah exactly being blunt about it no absolutely it did it did and I think that, I think it's, it's hard for me to own those moments because I wasn't working here but um, some of the things that the charity did in a, in a, in a period of time was was really complicated to understand and especially from the outside because I don't think the charity talked about it terribly well and we just you know decisions were made and then the pub Public heard things and are kind of like oh it's a bit strange. So we're we're doing our best to kind of get over that. It was a it was it was a it was a stumbling block. Um, but it, during that time, even during the dark times, as it were, the work with the really challenged young people was was still happening and is still just as effective and just as important. So mm-hmm. so hopefully. If we can carry on being really good at what we do, is it a new will... beginning, or how how much do we labour on this? Thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's hard. You're coming I, back, absolutely. Something. I, I don't want to say phoenix from the flames because that implies yeah, complete implosion. But yeah. it, but it was. It's it's more just in a funny way. We encourage young people to be resilient and get over bad times. We as a charity are doing the same thing. Okay. Your website is placed place, if people want more information? Yep, very much the website's a good place to go. Um, Facebook, of course, is always is always good uh, because Facebook is much more live, so, you know, mm. things that we do. Because, of course, the work we do every day is with, with young people that um, are at risk, and so, therefore, we can't have too much of a public information around sure. them. So every so often, we try and do big public 
exciting things. Anyone watching this though, especially youngsters who feel vulnerable, they, they, there's something's going badly wrong in their lives mm. in the sense of abuse or whatever, mm -hmm. do they ring you? Do they ring the police? I mean, where's the best point? The advice in that situation is is, is phone somebody. Phone it, there's somebody. no there's no Can we charge right. Anything? Absolutely, there's anything. no right nor wrong there. If if you are in a position of of, of feeling something's going wrong in your life, is is talk to talk to somebody. Sometimes it feels really hard to find an adult to talk to because you know teachers. It might be there. They're, they're the ones you're struggling with. It might be your parents you're struggling with. It might be your your neighbours or, or something like that. So the the advice is just phone anybody. But Childline is a good one. We have it. We have a phone number. Um, Eight zero 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 zero, and by all means Great call number. us. It's a, yeah, easily to, easy to remember. By all means call us. Uh, we can't help you immediately, but we can certainly give you advice and support over the phone. Um, the police, no harm in phoning the police. It's just you know, just talk to somebody. Um, and there are other brilliant charities out there doing brilliant work with children, young people, and families. You know, we're not the only ones delivering on the island. Um, we're the, we are unique in what we do, but you know, there are lots of other places to get help and support as well. So I'm never going to say this is the only number to phone and this is the right route through. Um, you know, there's the child and adolescent mental health services, CAMS. They do some amazing work with 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 people in very complicated situations in their lives and of course that might be the right service to go to rather than coming up to us. And are we any better or worse, I mean, as an overview only obviously, I mean, mm. do, do situations here mirror UK or, um, you know, what? It's a complicated question that one because, you know, the statistics around this, this globally around the threats and challenges that young people face um, growing up, are we, are we different on the Isle of Man from the UK? In some ways yes and in some ways, in some ways no. Um, Isolation is a complicated one here because because sometimes young people can get into a little bit of a spiral of not thinking there is any opportunity, um, and that's really sad because there are opportunities and there's possibilities. But then you know the same thing happens and to to young people in in cities in the UK or indeed rurally in the UK. So it's I wouldn't I wouldn't put us as an outlier, but we we have got a lot of work to do here. You know, there's always work to do. Um, the very tragic thing is that there is a need for a charity like the Children's Centre, you know, working on the Isle of Man. Um, it's a brilliant place to live. My, I've, my, I've moved my family here to, 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 to kind of live and grow mm -hmm. up and so forth. And I love it. I, I think it's amazing. And there's so many brilliant things for my girls to do. But the sad truth is there are people who do struggle. And, you know, charities like the Children's Centre are very, very needed. 